In this video, we are undervolting this Pentium 2 clocked at 400 MHz. But we will not rely on the settings and voltage readouts from the BIOS. We are going to utilize an Arduino to measure the CPU core voltage. This video is divided into several sections. First, we are going to build a circuit that is capable to measure a voltage and connect it to an Arduino. Second, we are going to update the .NET application that I have built for another video to support the display of the voltages. Third, we have to find a good spot on the motherboard from where we can measure the CPU voltage. And finally, we are going to undervolt the Pentium 2 to see how low we can set the core voltage before we see stability issues. The Arduino I am using is capable to measure voltages, but only up to 5 volts. The 5 volt limit is defined by the operating voltage of the Arduino. Here is a list with Arduino boards and their respective operating voltages. I am using an Arduino Uno, which is the first in the list. It has an operating voltage of 5 volts. PC power supplies, specifically ATX power supplies which I am using, deliver up to 12 volts. Just in case we want to measure other voltages around the motherboard, we should design a circuit that is capable to measure voltages up to at least 12 volts. To accomplish this, we need to create the following circuit. Two resistors in series. A 20 kilo ohm resistor is connected to the positive terminal, while another 10 kilo ohm resistor is connected directly to the negative terminal. The ground wire of the Arduino is connected to the negative terminal as well. And finally the sense wire from the Arduino connects between both resistors. With this circuit, we can measure voltages up to 15 volts. Now that everything is wired up, we can write a small program for the Arduino. If you are interested in a dedicated video about the circuit, the code and the communication between Arduino and other applications, please let me know in the comments. I have uploaded the program to the Arduino. But before we try the Arduino, let's first do a few control measurements with a multimeter. I have two batteries here. One is a 3V button cell battery and the other one is a AAA battery with a rating of 1.5V. The button cell battery gives a value of 3.28 volts on the multimeter. Let's check the AAA battery. The reading is 1.24 volts. This battery is a bit weak, but good enough for our tests. Now it's time for the Arduino. Let's try the button cell battery first. And we get a reading of 3.25 volts. That's really close. Let's switch and try the AAA battery now. This battery returns 1.2 volts. The Arduino is off by around 40 millivolts. The reason is the formula I am using in the Arduino program. This formula is very basic and for demonstration purpose only. The final Arduino application will use the actual resistor values, which will be way more accurate. In addition, using resistor values allow you to fine tune the Arduino to match the results of the multimeter, if that is something you would like to do. In the video description, you will find a link to a GitHub repository that contains all schematics, Arduino code, as well as an updated .NET application, which we will discuss next. We have utilized the Arduino in a previous project to measure the temperature of a modified AMD K62 Plus CPU. The .NET application that I have written for this purpose is only able to display one value, the temperature in Celsius. To show an additional voltage value is not difficult, but let's have a look at the Arduino. The Arduino Uno has a total of 6 analog pins. How about we utilize all 6 of them in case we need more temperature and voltage readings in the future. Pins A0, A1 and A2 will be dedicated to temperature measurements, while pins A3, A4 and A5 will be utilized to measure voltages. I will not go into details regarding the source code. But as I said before, if you are interested, please let me know in the comments. The source code is in the same repository as the Arduino program. You can find the link in the video description. And here is the final application. The Arduino is connected and I can verify our test measurements one more time. But this time, the .NET application is displaying the values. Here is the AAA battery, which had a voltage of 1.24 volts as per multimeter. Then we had the button cell battery. According to the multimeter, this battery has a voltage of 3.28 volts. 
And finally, so that you believe me that this voltmeter can measure more than 5 volts, here is a 9V battery. Now it's time to get to the motherboard. We are done preparing the tools we need to measure the voltage that is provided to the CPU by the motherboard. But now we need to figure out where is a good place to connect the Arduino to. The CPU is currently running at its stock voltage of 2 volts. So let's take a multimeter and look around the CPU and see if we can find some place in the circuit that shows 2 volts. As you can see, there are plenty of components that seem to have the stock voltage. But we need to make sure to measure the voltage as close as possible to the CPU. I am not an electrical engineer, but I have heard of filtering capacitors, inductors and all kinds of other magic. They affect the flow of current and the voltage. All we need is just a smooth and constant 2 volts V core. So let's repeat the measurements with the Arduino. I will try to find the same points that I've measured with the multimeter, but there were a lot of them that showed 2 volts. Okay, this is already a miss. The voltage fluctuates quite a bit. Definitely not good for V-core measurement. This is a 5V line, also not what we are looking for. I think this was also 2 volts, but again it's fluctuating. Let's try the other side of this inductor. Nah, come on. Aha, 2 volts! Looks like we found V-Core. But that's a really bad spot with all those capacitors around it. Oh well, time to get the soldering iron out and get a pin on this inductor. If you enjoyed this video so far, please give it a like. So everything is connected now. Let's see what happens when we power on the motherboard. The motherboard delivers 2 volts to the CPU according to the Arduino. This is the stock voltage and expected as I haven't changed any settings yet. The voltage fluctuates a little bit here and there, but it stays around 2 volts. Let's try now to undervolt this Pentium 2 CPU. Let's start with a modest 1.9 volts. That is just 5% lower than the stock voltage of the CPU. I doubt that we'll run into any issues with this voltage. Hmm, okay. It rebooted, but the voltage hasn't changed. Did I not save the changes? No, I did save it. Let's check the hardware monitor. Here the voltage also remains at 2 volts. This is the same value what we get on the Arduino. Let's boot into Windows and try a few tools to see what they report for CPU voltage. Oh, did you see that? The voltage has changed. 
Right after the hard disk detection was done, the voltage has changed to whatever was set in the BIOS. It seems like the motherboard starts with the voltage the CPU initially requests, but a bit later in the boot process, the motherboard overrides the voltage and delivers whatever is set in the BIOS. Now we can go another level down, to 1.8 volts. And as before, the voltage changes a bit later in the boot process. Next up is 1.7 volts. How low can the CPU go? Yep, 1.7 volts, also no problem. Next level, 1.6 volts. Uh oh, now the hardware monitor starts complaining. By the way, after each reduction in voltage, I am running some benchmarks in Windows off camera. Until now, the system is completely stable. So let's see what the hardware monitor is complaining about. Ah, the CPU voltage is too low. Yeah, that's on purpose. We can ignore that. And we are on 1.6 volts. I don't know what to tell you, but the system is still stable. There is just one little step lower. 1.55 volts. Then we are running out of lower voltages on this motherboard for the CPU. By the way, this motherboard has a modified BIOS. I have a video on my channel with a flashing process. Ok now, 1.55 volts, let's go! And there it is, we are at 1.55 volts. CPU benchmarks, 3D benchmarks, even playing Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed worked without issues. Not a single crash until now. I definitely have to test the system for a longer period. But I'm really impressed that we can reduce the vCore by over 22%. And it just works. Well, it worked so far. Maybe I'll try to get a better graphics card into the system and test it a bit further. But we have reached the end of the voltage selection and the end of this video. If you enjoyed this project, please like the video and let me know what you think about this experiment. Do we have to test other Pentium 2 models this way? Maybe we can overclock this CPU to 533 MHz. Not sure if the level 2 cache on the Pentium 2 is going to work at those frequencies. Anyway, if you don't want to miss this content in the future, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.